Hello there, and welcome to episode 7 in our series of building a C Sharp app to access the Jira REST APIs. Earlier in this series, we, uh, we created an app that logs into Jira, it gets back a J session ID, then it uses the J session ID to authenticate a request that pulls data from any of. We tried uh, three different APIs. In this episode, we've settled down on one API and we will be pulling data from that and then converting that data into CSV format. As I, I said before, uh, this JSON that we are parsing has a really flat structure. It's really just an array of records where you can think of each record as being a row in a spreadsheet. But we'll just need to step through that array, get each record, and, and write it out as a CSV string. And now there is one, one thing that I want to do to very slightly complicate life, and that is I want to put these columns in a very specific order to match what you get if you export this data using the report tool inside Jira. So in that specific order, it, it might get screwed up when it comes across uh, in, in our JSON. The, our, our JSON parsing library may have arranged things in, in generically. So I want those column names in the order that I want those column names. To do that, I'll need a list object, and that is in System Collections. So I've just added that up here at the top. We'll go down and start coding up our function right now format as CSV. There we have it. The first thing I do is add a try catch block as per normal. And, and the next thing we'll do is add in our standard error handling. And we'll copy that from the last function. We'll just change the name so our error message tells us which function it happened in. And then I do want to add the debug output as well to see what happened in this function when it ran. Now what we're putting in here is, or what we're populating at the end of this will be CSV data. There we have a try catch block with the error handling and debug output. So now we're ready to code up this try clause. If you, if you we're watching the earlier episode where we parsed the JSON from the login response. We'll be using the same same technique here. I'm using the Newtonsoft JSON library again, and I'll use a dynamic object to de deserialize our JSON data into. We'll start off with a, another dyn object and I'll fully qualify it again. Newtonsoft.json.json convert deserialize and it'll be a dynamic, dynamic object. And what we're deserializing is this .json data. Now, from that, we want to pull out that array uh, of, if we looked at our, our output in this last one, we can see that it comes back. It's called records, and then it just has an array uh, where each object inside here is a is a record, a row in a spreadsheet, essentially. We want to get that records object out. We'll do that and we'll put it into a string called records and that will be our dynamic object and we want that records that was at the top of it. That is right here. Get me the value that is that is assigned to this records key and we will convert it to string. And we could use value here instead. I use that in the uh, in the login function above, but I'm just showing a different technique here. So, so next, now that we've got them all into a big string, we want to parse that into an array of records. And there's a J array object that I'll just call A. We'll parse our record string into a J array, which will make it really nice and easy for us to step over. So now the column names, the other side of it, the column names. I want a a list of a list of strings, list string, and I will call this column names. So for that, I'm going to create a new list string, and I'm going to populate it here with the value from the report, because I want it to match the order that they come in the report. Let's just look at the report. This is one of the other things that. Whoops, too far down this up. We'll paste in our address. Ah, there, that was fast. Log in with admin admin. Pick our first 
well, log in with valid credentials. In this case, for me, it's admin admin because I never changed it from when I installed it here. We'll just pick any issue, go to reports, go down to our business intelligence export report, open it up, and we'll give it our analysis start and end dates. As you can see, I'm doing this in January, but my test data was entered in December. Uh, next. We'll get this stuff, and now I'm going to download it as a, a CSV. Yes, save it. It has completed. Open the folder. I'm going to open this with brackets because that will make it super easy for me to just copy and paste out the order in which the columns are exported. Copy and where were we? Oh, I was working in brackets. So back down here, we will initialize our list string with that stuff. Now we have all of our column names in the order that we want them. And uh, with that, we can start we can get into doing our header row. Header row. And that will be a string that I will just keep blank for now because we'll fill it actually by iterating over call names here. So for each string call name in call names, header row plus equals, oh, we do have to quote it ourselves plus call name plus I'll end quote ah but not quite we need a comma after it there we go so that will create our our CSV list of column names in a header row but we will have a comma at the end of it so let's strip that off So that'll strip off the terminal comma. Oh, we should put on a new line. And there we have it. That is our header row done. And now we can build our data rows. Now for this, we will we'll be looping over our J array to get to step over each record. And then inside each record, we'll loop over call names to get the values. I will start off again like I did above, and I'll call this data rows. So it's empty to start with, and then for each record in A, I'll just use a, a var for records. So for each of these, this record, this particular record that we're looking at, it's empty to start with, but we're going to populate it with another for each um, string call name in call names. It's our inner loop that's stepping over the columns. This record plus equals, and we will need to um, quote these ourselves, plus record, I did call it record, I did call it, yes, call name. And we'll close that off like so, and we'll put our comma there. Now we'll get the value, this column name from our record populate the values. Uh, of course, when we're done with this record, we will need to strip off that terminal comma again. Record. So we'll trim and get rid of that comma. And this record, we will add on our new line at the end of this record. So what's left at this point, we have our header row, we have our data rows, we need to concatenate and we'll just save it right into CSV data equals header row plus data rows and we'll save and let's try compiling let's see where did I screw up lots of errors they just want to deserialize hmm. list could not be found today so collections generic that's it, system collections dot generic. Let's address that one first. Yep, okay. So now we've just got line 164. What did, what's going on there? Yes. 
save. Let's give it a test. Just a warning, and that's um, that's fine. What are we? Oh, so it printed out the header row, but it didn't print out any data at all. That's a little bizarre. But can we see an obvious problem for each record in A? At the end of this, I never said it. Data rows plus equals this record. Compile, run. So now we have it all up and working. Our JSON has been turned into a CSV spreadsheet compatible form. Now uh, that's it for this episode. So in our next episode, we'll finish up the last function, which uh, just writes data to file. Thanks for tuning in, and I'll see you next time. Bye.